Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews, it's Gaming Friday. I'm Gary. And I'm Douche McGee. And today we're taking a look at Tenka, or Life Force Tenka, or Codename Tenka, uh, as it's had different name releases throughout the different uh, countries it was released in. Yeah. And it was released in 1997, uh, developed wow. and published by Psygnosis. It was released on the PlayStation 1 and on PC. This is set in the year 2096, where we still have cars right, yeah. driving around. <laughs> Do you have a turret on his car? I think you did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a first-person shooter in a futuristic kind of setting uh, where corrupt businesses have created bio-robots called Bionoids. <laughs> Yeah. Bionoids. Bionoids, as Bionoids. the game the game calls them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you play as Joseph D. Tenka. Mm, no, yeah, as okay. you discover what the evil corporation's plans are. And you're up against Trojan Incorporated. Right. And you must stop the armies that Trojan have created and put an end to their vile experiments. Deep. Deep. That's a deep tale. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much the whole story. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you need some kind of background information for this, don't you? I mean, well, that, I mean, you, just... I think your character is is an experiment. I think you are literally waking up now yeah. from one of these experiments. And throughout the game, your character's you know you hear him explaining how his mind is not not right or something's not right, and it's like the computer part talking to his. Biological part. Oh, right. So Tanker, yeah. So Tanker is a bionoid. Yeah. Who has just used Broken another free. bionoid to help him break free. And now he's going to go off and just bring Trojan down from inside, I suppose. Pretty much, yeah. So it's like Universal Soldier. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I could go with that. I, um, <laughs> I, I only really played the demo for this back in the day. I think I got uh, the uh, demo disc with a magazine, PlayStation magazine. That's that is exactly where I played it as well. A PlayStation magazine demo disc. Yeah. That's my introduction to this game. And then you were like, Gary, I want to have a look at Tenka. I remember this game called Tenka. Yeah, 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 let's, yeah. Let's play it. Like, okay. And I was, I was playing the game. I was like, I played this before it was a demo <laughs> disc. <laughs> and that, well, that's it. I'd gone through a mass load of first-person shooters uh, when I was younger. And, you know, I'd, I'd done Doom and I was going through Duke Nukem. And then I'd played this demo of Tenka. And, I mean, the first thing that got me was the gun. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it reminds me of the smart gun from It's like a from smart aliens. gun slash pulse rifle because it has the number tracker on there. Yes, yeah, yeah. Instead of on the side. And and there were lots of just little different features, like, like you can duck, which was yeah. new for yeah. a first-person shooter. In a first-person shooter, person shooter the, the, the fact that you can run... Uh, and duck. I don't think you can jump, can you? No, no, no. I can't. I can't jump. Uh, jump, but I can look up and down. You can look up and which down. It's just <laughs> awesome. You're like, I mean, I know we're obviously we're playing this on 2019 updated graphics, and things aren't like stretching or things like that. But well, no, I mean, th this game had to build technology to stop the tearing because when you when you look up and down, the perspective changes, and it yes. it was warping. The, the everything that you see yes uh, and so this game was one of the early first f first person shooter games to try and combat that which wow. is why you're probably seeing all of the the lines blocking every yes. single part of the the way that the you know the the, 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 the level's level been put together yeah it looks like it's falling apart at the seams but it's actually because it's trying to stop the perspective warping which, which I remember being a problem in Duke Nukem 3D when I tried to look yes. up in that game, everything warped, and it was really horrible to look at. Yeah, yeah. Where... Well, Duke 3D was um, was uh, the year before this, 1996. Yeah. Uh, like I said, th this for me is is in the it's in the dark age of first person shooter games. What I like to call the dark age of the of that genre, which yeah. is mostly the 90s when the genre really was born, uh, with Doom in 1993. So, you know, four years after Doom, yeah. this is what we're getting. Uh, and it's not not really that much of an improvement, is it? I, I, on the original Doom. On, on the original Doom, I would say yes, from 93. I, I, I would say, yeah, it's a it is an improvement gameplay-wise. Well, the it, story, not so much. I mean, you're just a yeah. soldier being sent out there with a gun and you've got to defeat the enemies. Yeah. But the fact that, you know, I'm looking up and down, um, I've got no map. You no. know, and and I have to find my way out. So the game's just like, here's a gun. 
off you go off, off you go and with all the experience you've garnered from games such as doom you're like okay let's uh let's let's see how this let's ha see how this works and it's not very straightforward like like we've got damaged terrain here so we're gonna have to work our way around that whoa whoa yeah these are these are weird little enemies i can't work <laughs> out if they're like robots or if they're kind of um insects kind of yeah i mean almost all the robots have got organic material in them the robots later on when you kill them they literally blood explodes out of them everywhere right so, so. it's it's a it's a combination of of, of both yeah but yeah, I mean, I think they, they obviously those flying ones, they, they do look like insects. So they've obviously been inspired by right, created so, in the form of. So this is new. This is the game kind of telling me like you have to drop down there. And I'm like, yeah, oh, OK, and coming so, back from down there. I don't think you even can. I, so. well, I, I, blow these guys up. Ugh. But yeah, for me, I said the, the dark age of first person shooters was between 1993 and 1998. Um, and most of the games in between that usually fall under the unplayable category for me. You know, with the exception of, like, Quake uh, uh, and Duke 3D, which both came out in 96. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 it was Half-Life in 1998. For me, it's just really where the first-person shooters just got better from oh, that point on. yeah, totally. This is a lot better to play than Alien Resurrection on the PlayStation. Well, yeah, because Alien Resurrection's in the same field. It's in that Dark Ages yep. of, of playing a PlayStation game with when there are no, you know, analog sticks. But this... It, yeah, yeah. Before the DualShock was released. But this is a very simplistic uh, first-person shooter where I don't actually... I mean, the up and down s stuff um, is great, but I don't actually have to do do that because the gun's got a kind of a lock-on feature. It, you still kind of have to look up and down in certain rooms when you're aiming at turrets or if you know, you're looking down the stairs... Yeah, you won't lock onto those enemies. You're going to have to physically look, you know, look down. Yeah, and them. and I remember playing Alien Trilogy at the time, and that I had to use the up and down sequence for that, which yeah. wasn't actually part of the game. It was just like <laughs> we're just adding this in. So I I remember when I said like I said playing the demo for this, using the up and down. I'm like, oh my god, this is this is groundbreaking. This is breathtaking. This is this is cutting edge, yeah, edge yeah. stuff. This is. Um, I so how are you finding the rest of the controls for the game? Being being a, being a tank controller, I suppose you know using the D pad a lot, yeah. especially at home when I play old school games at home. It, it's it's coming really easy. My thumb just follows follows through. I'm not using strafe a lot, which is strange. That's one thing. I did, what happened to you just then is enemies getting right up in your grill. Yeah. Is that once sometimes enemies get so close to you, you end up shooting through them and out the other side of them and doing no damage. Yeah. So you have to back away, and when you're backed up into a corner. And trying to escape, it's uh, it can be a real pain. Can, yeah, definitely. And it's it's the fact as well that strafe. I mean, we've got it mapped to the joypad. Um, is only well, you hold one button and, and move then, back and forth. That's right. Yeah. Which obviously with with games like ah motherfucker get off me get off me ah. with games <laughs> like um, Doom and Duke Nukem it was like two buttons. Yeah. Well, with the left straight, one made left, you go straight, left. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm not utilising at the moment, but that's probably because I'm just using the up and down D pad function yeah yeah uh, i knew you were behind there you always <laughs> know don't you when you're walking around a first person shooting game you're like there's a guy behind that corner of course there is there's always somebody hiding somewhere that looks yeah different. that's that's one of the generator rooms i think you need to blow up what's in here but i think you need to be aware of some turrets that will be on the ceiling oh there's, room. There's, there's turrets in there are there yeah, oh, okay I... right i'm not going to go in there just yet then i'm going to have a look around <laughs> sure. before, before i go around i Signosis, they also did um destruction derby i believe they did destruction derby they uh they did the um the the racing game as well is it wipeout Wipeout, oh man, now that's a classic. They were a big company back in the day. I remember their yes, name was yeah. attached to a lot of different games out on the PlayStation. And yeah. I thought for a time that they were um, they were actually going to do quite big. Yeah. Um, you know, because you were getting used to uh, companies like uh, Namco and Capcom yeah. and id Software. And it's like, oh, I'm recognizing Signosis. Yeah. Signosis. I'm, I'm starting to recognize these names, but Signosis kind of dropped off the map yeah it disappeared during the playstation 2 days uh, never uh, never really recovered i don't know whether they were brought out probably brought out by ea yeah yeah <laughs> probably, probably but mainly i mean they had good game titles yeah. but never enough to actually say right this is our number one game no you know like i said with with like capcom they had the resident evil and so they could just keep coming back to resident evil it had 
uh, Doom, so they could always come back to Doom. Could they re-release a new Destruction Derby? Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, I mean, the, you had Wrecked. You got Flat Out, which kind of died a horrible death, and the creators of that went on and made Wrecked. Yeah, so Wrecked is the real spiritual successor to Destruction Derby because you can have Destruction Derby style races and events in there. Yeah, in but then Wrecked. would you want to see a remake of Life Force Tanker or a Codename Tanker? Um, I mean, this game is uh, it's it's going to be one of those that. It, will eventually be forgotten in time you know i like looking after games or you know, game preservation yeah you know i, I think uh. all games should be preserved uh, even the terrible ones uh this this was a game that from the demo i was intrigued by and wanted to we wanted to see what it was about yeah yeah me too uh but after i don't think you finish, you need to continue shooting that no uh i'm just checking for anything extra before oh, oh there's, yeah, a, key, there's a key there so i'm gonna grab that blam 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 take you out uh oh. but for me this was a game that i wasn't uh, after spending almost an hour playing playing the game playing it through it was like this is fine you know i probably would have enjoyed this um, like I did the demo, had, had I got to play the game in its entirety. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to save my save my life. No. <laughs> but but this is it. I, I mean, would have like I've just done the first level um, after I don't know not being able to play it for 20 years. Yeah. And I, uh, doing the demo level, like hopefully there would have been something in the game. For me, that a lot, a kept lot of me the, coming back. A lot of the environments would are, are too samey. Uh, a lot of the enemies are too samey. The fact that you use this same gun throughout the whole game. Well, you do get you, upgrades for you it, can, though, do, do you? Do, you do get upgrades. You get, like, a, a missile <gasps> launcher we attachment. You can jump. You can jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, running, jumping, and crouching. Yeah. <laughs> you running, jumping, and crouching. Oh, slide, bam, bam, bam. Oh, shit, there's people now. Yeah. Oh, Christ. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Robocop man. You have crab walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, he crapped on the floor. <laughs> like that that's that's quite cool. Green blood. I mean now now I'm quite excited. I'm kinda of wanting to actually carry on and keep <laughs> keep going all the way through because yeah, there's a... I'm just trying to work out which is the button for it. There, there we go. You've got your single shot. Yeah. Which the computer tells you you single, single shot. shot. Yeah, and then you have your beacons that you can drop down to show you uh, wh uh where to go. Yes. Um, well, they cut yeah, they're they're loud, uh bright blinking lights. Uh, which yeah, so you can basically drop it down because this game is like a labyrinth. Yeah, it is a maze. Uh, dropping those down is good so that when you're <gasps> traveling back, you're like, yeah, I've definitely been here before because I've left a beacon here. Uh, yeah, but like I said, the, the, a lot of these maps are great big corridor and room labyrinths. You know, there's no big open areas, um, and you know, over twenty plus levels, it can it can start to feel pretty samey. Yeah, uh, and it's so easy to get lost without a map. That you know, having those beacons, it is helpful. But the fact that this game has the, the big labyrinths, and then there are air ducts that you can get into that connect some of the rooms. You're looking at a labyrinth of of corridors within a labyrinth. Yeah. And because moving through these, you know, areas where you have to crouch down and walk around, because some of them are quite extensive and long, it just feels really cumbersome and really painstakingly slow to move around the map. Sometimes. Yeah, he does feel. He does. I mean, like sometimes that. just turning around and doing a one eight, a one eighty to turn around behind you, just oh, yeah. yeah, it just feels so slow. Yeah, yeah. But then I think back to maybe thirteen, fourteen year old me. You know, I've done Doom, I've done Duke Nukem, I've got this game here, and I've got like eight hours to waste. Yeah, I could, you know, could probably just work my way through. And the fact that I mean, it's only level two. This, what would you say? There's twenty levels. Twenty plus levels. Um, yeah. It's only level two, and you know. The environment for me is slightly changing, like the graffiti. Uh, but the, it's that same graffiti smile you see it everywhere. Yeah, but it's a PlayStation <laughs> game. They they, yeah. they, they they didn't have much to work I with. Know, the I same know. with the guys. You know, the guys they have no anything, nothing that differs them from each other. They just all look the same. Yeah, robot. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, 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 it, it's a complaint, but I mean. I played the original Wolfenstein. Yes. You know, that is endlessly yeah. oh. the same. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> you know, endlessly. You literally yeah. have to have a pen and notepad beside you sometimes to, to start building the map. Yeah. Because it can be so samey. I was going to say, that game has no map at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I've grown up through the, you know, the, the ages of, of graphics. and But the, the fact... The, the reason why I don't like this is because it feels like the whole world is wobbling and is crashing and it, it's falling apart in the seams around me. Yeah. So even though the graphics are improved and there is more 3D environments to it, the gameplay suffers. And why I like 
original Doom and Quake and Duke Nukem and Wolfenstein is because they're fast. They feel yeah. fluid. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it was going from you know PC to console gaming and the fact that console first person shooters they really needed that analog stick they which, did. which changed things uh so until but, then it's yeah. yeah but then even then i suppose they didn't really succeed with it though did they they um i mean uh online gaming is still better i suppose with with pcs that's what they always say well because yeah the controls are easier trying to always you get more precision aiming with a keyboard and mouse than you do a yeah controller. even though i still prefer to use a controller for most of my gaming it's yeah. more more relaxed that way I yeah think. i mean i i use it i use the joysticks but every now and again i suppose for me i'm always playing old school whoa fuck, um old school arcades so yeah i'm always using the d-pad because well games don't use any other controls back from right. back in those days so my thumb stays in the same motion and that's why i still get the fluid motion of just running around the areas but yeah there is no like i've just done that whole area there's no need for me to go back there no everything is done and there wasn't yeah. really even a lot in the area to make me want to go back no i mean i think some of the weapon attachments can be missable if you don't find them on the level and you move off the level i don't think you'll ever see it again yeah so there is you know, some emphasis on exploration to make sure you do find the weapon upgrades but I mean this not, is not cool. necessary you've got infinite ammo with this machine gun it does tear through almost everything we, we are in like this sewer area now which is which is because every game's got to have a sewer <laughs> level <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 it's the fact that we just kind of yeah we've made our way out of the apartment block where yeah. we were being locked up in which is deep in the gangland territory I suppose because yeah. that's where what we saw in the uh opening sequence and now we're trying to escape to get back to the trojan factory why why would you put your bionoid fucking <laughs> super soldier with this i mean we don't even see where he got this badass gun no like i he, think that, that yeah he just because <laughs> most of the enemies look like their weapons are attached to them wow look we're outside oh are we outside no we're in a car park yeah uh die 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 <laughs> die 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 and yeah he's got he's got his attached to him yeah. so these are those those soldiers, I'm guessing, are, are what we're supposed to be, or the prototype. I guess so. Yeah, another one version of them. Yeah, yeah. But we did notice that the, obviously the blue line down the bottom is your shield, and that yeah. wears down. And the red line next to it is obviously your health. Your health. So your shield has to go down, and then your health goes down. Yeah. But now I've just noticed the added on of that. They've added a a motion sensor. Motion sensor. Thing. You can see if there's something in front of you, which. You'd think you'd see anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, I, yeah. Oh, no. we're, now we've got a cut sequence. A <laughs> so we have our guy. So, is that, I was under the impression. I was, there we go. I was waiting for it to blow up. I was like, is he blown up the garden? Yeah. What's, what's blowing up? He's, he's blown up the whole building and got on his truck. and he's. I don't think just... we're on Earth either. I think we are on another planet. Really? Yeah, I think we were. On, there's lots of different planets in the story of this game. Right, okay. And this is just one planet. I think so anyway, from what I'm remembering of the story. Shit, there's fucking people shoot. I hate it when the game used to do that games used to do that where they're shooting you as soon as you start. You start <laughs> yeah. to, oh, that was a different spinny thing. <laughs> that's that's cool, I suppose. I I like the whole floating droid stuff. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, what's that? That oh, no. was uh <laughs> nope, that was not an upgrade. Did it do anything? Yeah. No. He probably said something like, you know <laughs> diarrhea or something. Yeah, your auto lock on them was trying to aim for the the, the, sl the sludge, sludge on the floor, floor, yeah. floor yeah. That's what I thought. I was just like, ah blah blah blah. Yeah. I did like I said, for me I remember just mainly this game for this gun. Yeah. You yeah, because that's the one gun you're gonna see the whole time. It's the it's one gun one in front of you. Yeah. And, and it just had this kind of little motif of, you know, the the the, the noise it would make when it's like. Yeah. Gee, 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 gee. Well, for me, it was just reminded me of Aliens as well. You know, being a big fan of Aliens. Yeah, like, film. like, like this... you see this environment, you're like, ooh, ooh, this feels a bit like Aliens. Yeah, like the I've... red light in the background. I just realised the floors moving, so I'm going to like a conveyor belt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. Um, uh, oh, stop messing around, Ian. Uh, jump. Hey, I can jump. <laughs> Like, why would you jump in this? I haven't done a single jumping bit. No, I, 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 I haven't I, utilized it at all. No. So unless there's a section later on, which well, is like... a platform jump. Yeah. Or fall to your death. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, God. I can feel that. I wouldn't put it past me in a game like this to do it. No, I mean, we used to do it in Doom. 
Um, yeah. But you didn't jump. You were actually just strafe running as fast as you can over yeah. over stuff. And Duke Nukem well, you're utilized doing quick it. rocket jumps. Yeah, and <laughs> and the way Duke Nukem utilized it because of the looking up and down was quite horrible. So uh, that looks like a platform, doesn't it? Yeah. That looks like a platform. It looks like it, but I don't know. I just picked up the <laughs> shield. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I'm locking onto it. I'm just going to start shooting it. Just to see if anything happens now. No. Right, what about well, sometimes you've got to shoot stuff for quite a while before anything happens. Yeah, let's try opening usually this tell. door. Can we open up this door? So now, it wants to, to lock, you know, your gun's locking onto that as a target yeah. as well. Right, okay. So, so much to lock on. What about this over here? Like, it looks this, like an elevator this, platform, I'm, I'm, but... <laughs> jump up and down. Jump, jump, no ladders. Right, okay. No. No. Somebody's probably writing in the comment section now, like, oh, you totally missed that thing on the side. I've done this level like four or five times. Yeah. Shoot this. Shoot this. But like, I, you, normally you can tell when your bullets are bouncing off stuff like that. Like you're doing stuff, but... Yeah, like, you're usually a doing, mark. Not yeah. doing anything. Um, can I hit the door? Standing further away seems to do more rapid fire. <laughs> Well, I think the weapon has like a cooldown. It has the green and red lights on the side, which oh, indicates, I think, how quickly you can fire. I'm yeah. Like, but other than that, you, you still have infinite ammo. Mm, no, no, can't. I'm not not being able to open that door. Not being able to shoot that. There is no interact button. There is no activate no. Panel. I mean, that's just, so, I've got yeah. my duck. I've got my jump. I've got circle, which I would say automatically open stuff, but you know doors no, open anyway. Just automatically open, yeah. Um, you know I've got my shoot button. I'm gonna try. It. Oh, something did happen then. Like, like, <laughs> like my health is beeping. Like, did yeah, that maybe is... it's a health recharger. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe that's that's. Good. I did not think of that. <laughs> like, but if like I there's, yeah, there's no menu, so if I hit start, it just brings me to this. Yeah. So I'm like, right, okay, I've got to level three. Hey, I got the level oh, three of Life Force Tanker. Literally feeling ill when you spin the camera. Yes. Around, when you're looking up in the ground, like the warping effect. <gasps> really? It literally, uh... ma it literally makes me feel queasy and ill looking at it. So the fact that you're trapped here in in this room with yeah. the escape. I'm ready to bring this episode to a close. Okie dokie. <laughs> and just say that, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of, of the game. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's kind of interesting. The story's kind of interesting. The monster design is kind of interesting, but it's a big maze of over twenty levels. I'm just not that fussed about playing playing through to find out what, what actually happens. Yeah. The review scores for the game when it did come out were fairly low. Oh. Gamespot gave it a six out of ten. EGM gave it a five out of ten. Uh, IGN, you yeah, know, they gave it a seven out of ten. They really enjoyed it. Wow. Okay. Uh, but for me, it, it is a hard pass. Yeah, I I wanted to like this game, but I'm I'm finding it hard too. Um, you know, it's it's one of those first person shooters I played back in the day, and I was like, oh, I played the demo back in there, like, wow, I'd wonder wonder how that works. And then when you actually play it, and you're like, uh, the controls are a bit awkward. There's no map. You know, I don't really know what I'm like. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing here. I'm totally lost. And uh, first person <laughs> shooters are my shit. Yeah, you know, there's there's usually something and. Like, we've only just realized that this is a health station, so it's making a horrible <laughs> beeping noise, and this is why you had the manuals in the games to break yeah. it all down to you, so you knew so what you were getting to, to when you were getting into it. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, if it's really simple and somebody puts it in the comment section, then maybe I'll go back and have a look at it, um, but at the moment... No, never playing, no. Never playing this again. No. Ah! <laughs> so with that, I just want to say thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be back next Friday to have a look at another video game. Of course, new film reviews on Thursdays. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Patreon. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time. Just notice the showcasings. Oh, yeah. <laughs>